Hello, sunshine. Welcome to the show, your show. I'm Coy Wire. This is CNN 10, and we have your 10 minutes of news with no opinion, no slant for this Thursday, October 23rd. Happy Friday Eve. We begin with some big news regarding one of the most common and often most serious food allergies, peanuts. 10 years ago, a landmark study proved that introducing peanut products to young babies could help prevent them from developing life-threatening allergies. Now, a decade later, new research is showing just how effective the unique approach has been. Our Meg Terrell has more. Well, about 60,000 U.S. kids are estimated to have avoided having a food allergy um, after guidelines were changed in 2015, specifically about the early introduction of peanuts to their diet. Now, uh, this is a study from researchers at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. They used electronic health records to look at diagnoses of food allergies and specifically peanut allergies around this guidance change. And the reason the guidance was changed was there was a landmark study in 2015 that showed early introduction of peanuts to babies, you know, between about four months and 11 months of age was associated with a uh, significantly decreased risk of developing dangerous peanut allergies uh, and for having them later in life. And so the guidance was changed. And what they found is that um, after that 2015 guidance, specifically for high risk babies, uh, there was a 27% decline um, in uh, peanut allergies. And then after that guidance was expanded in 2017, that decline uh, went to 40%. And so obviously, Obviously, food allergies and specifically peanut allergies are a huge issue. Um, 8% of U.S. kids is estimated to have a food allergy and 2.2% of kids are um, thought to have peanut allergy. And so the researchers here say this is evidence that introducing peanuts and uh, other allergens as well potentially uh, is a good way to reduce risk of developing these allergies over time. Uh, And the guidelines right now are around four to six months of age um, in consultation with pediatricians. Now to the global manhunt for the thieves who stole crown jewels from the Louvre Museum in Paris in broad daylight in just seven minutes time. Museum officials say there are now around 100 investigators working on this case. The Louvre's curator estimates the stolen jewelry is worth $102 million. A Paris prosecutor gave a warning to the thieves saying that they will, quote, never obtain these considerable sums if they were to dismantle, melt down, or resell the artifacts. French police have recovered one of the two getaway scooters that was used in the heist. They're also searching for DNA evidence in and on the truck and the ladder that was left outside of the museum. Space news now. As NASA races to return astronauts to the moon, it appears they may be rethinking their reliance on Elon Musk's SpaceX to do so. U.S. Department of Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy, the acting head of NASA, says he is ready to reopen the bidding process for Artemis III, the historic moon landing mission slated for as soon as the year 2027. SpaceX currently holds that contract, but Duffy says they are falling behind schedule in their bid to deliver the Starship, which will be used for the mission. It's the most powerful rocket ever created, but it is still in the early stages of development. Industry leaders have expressed concern that the long timeline could cause NASA to lose the new moon race against countries like China, India, and Russia. Duffy says he's willing to let other companies bid, including Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin, which has its own contracts for other future Artemis missions. NASA hasn't landed an astronaut on the moon since the Apollo missions more than 50 years ago. Pop quiz hot shot. What does the term etude mean in piano music? Slow lyrical work, study or exercise piece, fast dance piece, or improvised solo? If you said study or exercise piece, you better work. Frédéric Chopin is the composer most famous for his etudes, short, technically challenging songs that also have a great emotional and musical depth. Have you ever heard of the Piano Olympics? They're formally known as the International Chopin Competition, taking place in Warsaw, Poland. They're held just once every five years, and competitors perform pieces by the iconic Polish composer Frederick Chopin, who's become somewhat of a patron saint for emotional and beautiful classical music. This year's winner, Eric Liu, a 27-year-old classical pianist from Massachusetts, was selected the winner by a panel of 17 judges. He beat more than 180 other talented musicians. Here's part of this Chopin showdown. Lou 
Blue's prize, 60,000 euros or about 69,000 US dollars along with a gold medal. On this day in history, October 23rd, 2001, the Apple iPod was officially announced. For all of us old heads, when the iPod came out, it was epic. I was in love like music, fallen like Alicia Keys, make like Nelly and ride with me as I reminisce a little more. The iPod is now like an ancient ancestor of the iPhone. No calling, no texting, it was just music. Like a high tech tiny jukebox about the size of a deck of cards with a library of our favorite songs at our fingertips. You could store about 1000 songs on it. And at the time that was crazy like Casey and Jojo because most people were still storing their music in stacks of CDs or cassette tapes. We tapped our CNN 10 vault so you can see how we reported on this at the peak of its popularity more than 20 years ago. To grab hold of the hottest selling consumer gadget on the planet, you must move fast. A polished, beautiful iPod is sold every two seconds. It's sleek, it's modern. It's small and it has a lot of music. Uh, really, really easy to use. We have sold now over 10 million iPods. Yeah, hard to walk down any street now and not see white headphones coming out of, out of people's ears. On the surface, this darling of the tech world is simply a hypercharged music machine, a portable computer hard drive capable of recording and playing 10,000 songs, 21 days of nonstop music. The problem is, unless you're a radio station, you don't own that much music. So the rapidly expanding cult of pod is coming up with all sorts of ideas about what to do with that extra space. <laughs> at the Brearley School in New York. Tu fais les questions? Students study foreign Avec. languages on iPods. Now they can hear any time how they sound compared to a native speaker of French or Chinese. And that helps us with like hearing other people speak and hearing how we're supposed to be pronouncing things. We would love to use it more for the history department. There are quite a few applications in the sciences. I can see this expanding to many other departments in, in the coming year. The applications go on. Catherine Cornelius is an artist buying an iPod with photo storing capabilities. It's easy for me to have my portfolio on that while I'm, you know, who, know, who knows who I could run into and show my work to. Critics complain that the rechargeable battery must be replaced by a technician. Competitors say their mock pods offer better sound quality. But everyone watching the tech business knows little pod sets the pace. I mean, basically, if you want to compete with Apple on this thing now, you've got you to gotta have an iPod knockoff. You can't do something much different. So it's changed the world that way. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10, a selfless St. Louis teen using a once in a lifetime chance to help others in need. 17 year old Kat Gaylord has been in and out of the hospital for nearly her entire life battling a brain tumor. And she wanted to find a way to give back to those who helped save her life. I wanted to really raise money for my surgeon who's been a big part of my life since I was three years old. I didn't know exactly what way I wanted to do it. She used her wish through the Make-A-Wish Foundation to launch her own line of special bracelets. Each color has its own meaning and 100% of the proceeds go to fund pediatric brain tumor research at a local children's hospital. She had some help from the pros too. Kat partnered with Atlanta based jewelry creator Elizabeth Newton to bling this idea to life. Newton is still in awe of Kat's altruistic act. Being a part of it, it's truly surreal. She could have gone anywhere or met anybody, but instead she wanted to use her wish to make a difference in this world. Kat's bracelets are now for sale at a local boutique, being sported on wrists across the country. It's a dazzling example of how even small things can have a huge impact and we can turn our struggles into a strength. Rise up. Let's get to our Friday Eve shout outs. This first one goes to Coach Dice at Satillo ISD in Satillo, Texas. Go Lions! And this shout out goes to Mr. Simmons at Mid Carolina Middle School in Prosperity, South Carolina. Thank you for making me and my team a part of your day. Thanks to all of you who've been subscribing and commenting on our CNN 10 YouTube channel for your shout out requests. Hope you have a thoroughly thoughtful and thriving Thursday. I'm gonna see you right back here tomorrow for Friday. We are almost there. I'm Coy Wire and we are CNN 10.